Greetings, Internet, and welcome to Aaron Plays, and I hope you're doing fantastically well. In this episode, I'm going to be doing Situation 3 of Panzer Blitz that me and Ari played last night. So today is the 23rd of May, so it was done on the 22nd of May. We played the scenario to a sort of conclusion. Um, it was fun. It was interesting, but not particularly well balanced. And you'll see as we go through the um, sequence of the game. So let's go down to the map. I say down because I'm used to doing it on the it's now on the screen. So let's go through to the map and see what the situation is all about. So we changed modules because the elite or deluxe module that we were using had the original situation cards. We decided to change the modules so to have the updated revised situation cards. And that's what we're looking at here. So effectively, this is meant to be 1941. All the other scenarios are between 43 and 44. And they're basically saying that these German tanks, which are Mark IVs, the H obviously weren't in existence then. So they're actually meant to represent Panzer III's and have their attack value halved to seven and their range halved from eight to four. Um, as you will see, this will have some serious consequences on the scenario. Um, so I'm playing the Germans again. Harry was playing the Russians and he set up a defense. Um, the victory conditions are to, for, for the Russians to win. They are able to establish an unbroken line of hexes covered with either a unit or fire from west to east. So as we look at the map, the west is at the top, the east is at the bottom. Um, and then for me to win, win if they can clear a path three hexes wide from south edge to the north edge, so from the left of the screen to the right of the screen, uncovered by Russian units or fire, by the end of the Russian move in turn 10. Now, the fire means that a unit must be able to project fire into that hex. So let's move this out of the way and see how Harry approached this situation. Okay, so there's three map boards, a map board three, two, and one. And he has a front line and a sort of secondary line to back it up. Now, if we look at just this one hex here, Okay, in there he's got an anti tank gun which can project fire up to five hexes. So effectively, he's projecting fire here, 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 all the way to the board edge, and this one all the way to that board edge. So he's got a solid line of units plus fire, and then he's got this mortar here that can, you know, he's got a range of 12 that can project anything along that line as well. That's got a range of 10, this mortar over here. So that board is fairly well covered. It's open as well. Um, and if you look at the range on those anti-tank guns, it's five. The good, decent fire value of 12 out to five hex range. Okay. And it's, as I just said, pretty open. There's not much place for me to hide. Um, and if we look at one of my vehicles um, over here right just putting it there for the, just to, to observe remember these are at half capability so he's actually got an attack of seven and a range of four so out to range of four one two three four out of be seven firing at and you're going to town you've got to count them as all the same, so it's 18, 19, 20 he's got defending in, in that hex. I'm only able to protect seven. Um, the R class is all armoured, and if I'm within two hex range, okay, I get double value. So therefore, oh, great, I'm at 14. But his anti-tank gun will be at double value as well, so that'll be at 24. 24 to 8 is 3 to 1. 
my tanks are so vulnerable that I was looking at it and I'm thinking, no way. Yeah, he's got longer range. I'm going to have to come in close, and then I'm going to be hit at three to one. And I thought, Aah! whereas I'm only going to be able to have to target the same 14 to 18, 19, 20, defending. So one tank can't even get one to one, whereas one gun can get three to one. That's not good odds. So that's one of the reasons I decided not to come on that on the I've got to get used to this. this is not north this is east because the boards have been displaced that, that way then i thought right okay so look at the center board the problem with the center board i've got to get a three hex uh wide gap and if i'm attacking on the center board he can reinforce from obviously both sides the center is probably the weakest, but you still got a decent anti-tank gun, which can cover most of the, the front line there with a well. This, this is one of the problems I'm having with the game, is what can the Germans do against these massive defensive Russian infantry? So if any of you guys who are watching can answer that question, because it's, it's baffling me. Um, because I can't, we, we've got vehicles to get a one to one of them or struggle to get one. And my infantry is so puny as well. And I, can, I mean, they're all right, admittedly, their attack value is only five, but it's that massive defense, especially in the town. So I've got to attack them both again. So he's got 16, 17, 18. It's tricky for me to get high odds on that. So, yeah, he's he, again, he's covering. All, all of the hex sides. So there's a solid line there of units and or fire. Then I looked at the... I'm going to say the southern board again, but it's not the southern board. It's the westernmost, uh, easternmost board. Get there in the end. Um, and this is why I decided... I, I, I took a, a note from Manstein's book. You know, go through the woods. You get cover. You can't really do much until I'm sort of around here. He's got one of his weaker anti-tank units, but he's still got two fairly strong infantry units. And there's infantry that can reinforce. So I was thinking if I can come through the woods along this road, get my three line, three hex deep using the board edge and let him come at me with his infantry, I might be able to do it. You know, I was thinking this is going to be tricky. I might be able to get a draw. So that was the plan, and that's his defence. He's got a, a, a really solid line all the way along with these, these infantry units that I'm going to struggle to take out. So, and then we had a chat about the game and such forth, and then we started to, well, I said, started to set up. So I'm going to take you to where I did set up. I, I, I didn't set up at the top there. So let me just pause, and then bring back where I actually am on here. Right. Okay, so there's me ready to set up. We're about to start turn one. Um, I've got some units coming in via road and some units that are not starting on the road. Um, but as I say, I'm, I'm going to be doing a lot around this area of the board. I've got to, I want to get through these as quickly as possible and hopefully set up some form of line here where I can halt any Russian sort of counterattack. Remember, this is a 10-turn scenario, and this is my third time playing the game in total, whereas Harry's actually played this one scenario three times at this point, um, each time as the Russians. So yeah, there's a little bit of an experience, but the end again, he hasn't played for a while. So, and... I'm a little bit different. He's, he's not seen an attack from the Germans down this side. In all his other encounters, the Germans have attacked here. But as I explained, why I'm not attacking over this area is those guns will just tear me to ribbon, or turn, turn my most offensive unit, which is my obviously my tanks, to ribbons, even though the game has nerfed my tanks already by making them Panzer threes and reducing the firepower. 
Okay, let's begin. So, in I come with the half track. This half track is carrying some German infantry. Three, four, five. Remember, it's half per movement point on a road. Six, seven, eight. Into the woods there. That means he can't see me. Even though my guy came into here, right in the open and went, Hoo! they moved back into a woods there. So if I actually hide the piece, that's classed as a wood hex. Even that's classed as a wood hex. And even that's classed as a wood hex. And if someone's in the woods and you haven't got a unit adjacent to him, you can't see him. We wet the pieces. Okay. Next unit is coming on. That costs it a half a movement extra to get onto the board. But it's got enough to get into there. Remember, for the Germans, the stacking limit is three. And in they go. So, can't be seen. Now, coming in here, which isn't on the road, all three of my units can come in and not pay the extra half movement point because they're not coming in a road, road column, as it were. So, that's one, two, then three, four, five, six, seven. Seven and a half, I want to remain hidden. So, and the rest of my guys just sort of follow up behind. I was working out, I can't move. There's a mouse gone. I can't move into that hex because there's, if I remove the pieces again, because of that barrier there. Because my, my, to actually enter that hex, that means I've got to come off the road because you can't, Use road movement and stack. So he's just behind him. I think I'm talking about different old oh, wagons and such forth. Fair enough. Right, we had a little discussion about road movement and how to get around it. So eventually my tanks are all ganging up behind some more half tracks these ones are carrying anti-tank guns which is very useful considering he has no tanks so as i say i i, I really don't understand some of the what the scenario design um they give me anti-tank guns the enemy have no tanks they gave me puny mortars against really strong infantry i can't see any edge that the germans have in this scenario any sort of thing that you know because they're weak in the tanks uh, I don't know, maybe that's for historical correctness but it really has hampered i just cannot get the firepower to actually hurt these russians so i i, I really don't see how this scenario is balanced but I'm not playing it competitively in that regard. I'm I'm wanting to learn the rules um, and, and just play the game. But it does make me raise the question, like, come on, you guys have must have play tested this a fair amount of times. Why have you not given the Germans a, 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 a tool that can pick the defence apart? Not make it easy, of course not, but just something. Anyway, so... That that was, and we were having this discussion as we were playing, and 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 Ari was was agreeing with me. Um, but you you play with what you got. So again, we're talking about right. So he's starting to move. So his units. He had no fire because he couldn't see me. Um, so he's getting things onto trucks because he's going to try and obviously reinforce it. I I put all my strength down here and it looks quite impressive until you remember that the tanks are at half strength half range you know my infantry look at it three six eight one against a, a five four sixteen one what are you supposed to do um let's put your truck back to go and pick up somebody i assume causing his own little traffic jams. And that's what, yeah, it is one of the nice things about the game. You've got to think about the logistics, where your guys are going to be, where you, what's blocking what. We had a little discussion about the town. Um, 
and and the road. But obviously, I, I'm not. He, he doesn't need all that strength up here now because I'm obviously not coming coming that way. So he can start bringing some units down. And we now start this turn two. It is indeed turn two for me. Okay, so I've got a puzzle. And maybe the game should be called Panzer Bu Puzzle because I've got to work out how to take out these two units. Remember, I can't shoot at him at the present moment because I can't see him. You can only shoot at the unit in a wood if you've got someone adjacent to spot. Um, so again, I'm working out what, where I'm going to go. I can't shoot. I'm sort of working out, okay. So the half track, so it moves in. Remember, there's no opportunity fire. So if we're moving in there, that's one. Moving on to that slope is three. That's a total of four movement points so far. Four, five, six, seven. Enter that hex is eight. Dismount the infantry is a three. Nine, ten. I repeat that move to get all three of my infantry into, remember, I can stack three units into that hex there. My thought was, okay, I can use them to close assault either this or this. But even then, I'm at three, six, nine to 16. One to two. And I'm bringing some tanks up now to fire into said units. But again, they're, they're, they're only actually going to be firing with three firepower because <clears throat> when you're firing at something, you know, infantry or artillery uh, artillery there, it's not an armoured vehicle, so my armour is firing at half effect. They're already at half effect, so 14 becomes 7, which becomes 3.5 from each of those guns, from each of those tanks. So you can see, with even with 3 infantry and 4 tanks, I'm only getting 1 to 1 on that stack. True, I can and will target the anti-tank guns as an individual unit, which you're allowed to do. But I've still got to get rid of the bloody infantry at some point. And it's at this point I'm realising I'm not sure I'm going to do this. Um, I want to get some anti-tank guns on the top of the hill here, ideally in these wood hexes, so they can't be seen, but they can hopefully slow down the Russians on this board. Then I realised their range is only five. There's not much range. If anyone watched the previous episode where you had a Russian mortar which had 24 fire value and a range of 20, and then I'm sitting here with little pea shooters. <laughs> so maybe the design of the game was a bit anti-German. I, I really don't know. Trying to work out where to put... Look at this magnificent mortar. Three fire value. Yay! So exciting. Yeah. However, it's not really putting me... I, I, yeah, it's, it's unbalanced, but it's not putting me off the game. Um, I'm still enjoying the game because, uh, say, Harry and, and I have a nice chat while we're talking about it, and it's creating a puzzle. Is there a way to do it? Can I get lucky? Right, so I'm going to do a close assault here. And when you're close assault, you've got to fight everything. So I've got three, six, nine, attacking, 12, 13, 14, 15. One to two. I need a really low roll. I roll six. Well, that's not really low, is it? <laughs> okay. So we then begin the Russian turn. Don't know what happened there. You flip the counter. He's firing. Or is he not? No. Uh, Looking at you can, can't really fire, you can't fire at vehicles. Even though it's got a fire value of four, you can only if you can only fire at vehicles if they're adjacent. Is that a tank gun can definitely fire though? So we've got lots of should I, should I? Hmm. Those two are definitely firing on there. I don't think that one fired. Or did it? Ooh, can't remember. 
Well, I must have done. I'm not sure if you've got a five there. Uh, I am in the open. Oh, it's class. It's not class. I don't know. Well, we did it and, it, and it didn't do anything. So, okay. However, his shooting here did disperse those. And then he starts doing a little bit more movement stuff, mounting on top of trucks and wagons. Um, truck going to pick up something. And then this one, I was like, what? Back and forth. I don't know what's happening there, but um, then it was infantry movement. Remember, you got you do all vehicle movement, then infantry. You can't intermix it. And then it's turn three. So he's got an annoying truck here. Okay. Can't fire at it. So I've got to deal with it. I've got to, you know, because I need to get beyond there. So I'm going to have to. The thing is, if I move adjacent to it, he just moves away again. He moves back two hexes back to say there, and he's hidden again. So, yeah, that's another little puzzle I've got to deal with. Right, so I want to take out that anti-tank gun. All right, so I fire quite a few of my tanks at it to get a three to one. It might even be a four to one, I can't remember, but and yeah, I roll a three, which I think was enough to take it out. So it must have been a four to one shot. Then I decided, right, I've got to surround this truck as best as I can. So I can't get any more units around it, or can I? No. Unfortunately, I leave a gap. Can't do anything more than that. And I undisperse my infantry. Oh, they should have been. Oh, there was only the top unit that was dispersed. Right, that makes a bit more sense now. Okay. Um, yeah, so I was able to do a close assault there and was quite successful. All right, then I remove all the fire and disperse from my units. Okay. And that's it. He just moves there. Nothing I can do about it at all. Uh -huh. I was so like, hmm. So that's four, eight, twelve. I was like, okay. I'm thinking this is unbelievably hard on the Germans. But again, if any of you guys can yeah, you know, put in the comments a way that you can see what the Germans can do here other than what I've done because I'm, like, struggling. And now he puts those two infantry together and it's like, well, what, am I supposed <laughs> what am I supposed to do against that? 12 from 16, you know, you're looking at 28 defence. Okay, I can target one unit, but I can't even get one-to-one -one on one of the units. Never mind two of them. Can't overrun them. I'm like, what do I do? Okay, in the current situation, remembering I need a three hex wide clear of fire, he's got no fire on this hex. So at the present moment, or, or unit, so at the moment... In this exact situation, it's a draw. Okay. Um, actually, that's not even true, is it? Because that's got a range of four. So he can project fire down to here. Can't project fire here, but he can here. So his front line would be that, 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 because that can then project fire to there, and then, and then carrying on all the way up the front. So... I have to do something about the, these guys. And then even this little truck is stopping me claiming victory. So I've got to get rid of him. I just tried it with five units. So let's try it with in my next turn. And there's more of these infantry creeping up on me. Hmm. 
we were talking about slopes and what can see and what can't see on slopes because some of the actual line of sight rules are a little bit well, once you get around i mean any line of sight rules once you get your head around them they all sort of make sense in their own particular pocket universe but it's it's getting your head around that pocket universe um So we're then talking about what's covering what. And we move to turn four. Okay. German turn four. I'm trying to work out, do I want to do any shooting? So this is where <laughs> I'm looking at this guy sitting in the open. Can my anti-tank gun see him? We worked out, yes, he can. And then I re remembered the range. I was like, oh, man. So you can, I'm, like, oh, I'm going to shoot there. And then decide not to because of the range. Okay, so I'm firing everything I can here at these boys. Okay. Again, I'm talking about his units and what I've got to do during my movement. I was working out my movement and I haven't fired yet. I rolled the dice. And then I rolled the one. That was a good result. That's the best I can get. Which is only a dispersed. So I was only targeting the one unit. I wasn't targeting both of them. So it was like, right, even with a one. So here we go. Surrounding that unit. I know he can't move into that. So I only need five units this time. Last time I needed six. This time I only need five. Stop that truck moving. Okay. Okay, we're, on, we're having a chat about slopes and such forth. Um, okay, everyone's finished. Over to the Russian turn. And here they come. More little trucks moving forward. Bringing up units he doesn't need. My whole army is being stopped by three units, one truck and two infantry. He doesn't need any of this stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, all right. He has a whole front line to project, but he, he doesn't need it. And then he's got another truck. That's just <laughs> When he did this move, I thought... Now, I've played ASL, and I've had the, the half tracks and the... The trucks win scenarios just by being in the right way or doing strange things. But trucks in this, you know, basically holding the line. And you know, I'm like, mm, okay. I don't know. It, 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 it's a little bit frustrating. But that's part of the game. Turn five. Okay, so I know I've got to kill this guy. I don't need much. He's only got a defense of one. So a couple of half tracks should be able to get. I need. I want a four to one to make sure of it. Okay. So I was working out what would be the best way to do it. Those three units, and then I've obviously got to do something against this truck now as well. So dedicate my fire. So I took out that truck. Whoop whoop. Okay. Panzers are rolling. Hot. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five of my units being used to take out one truck. So it can't just skittle around and do things. So I've got to work out now, can I get a surround on this truck to stop the same thing occurring again? And that's what pretty much most of my turn is doing. As you can see, I actually worked out a way to do it. So he can't get away. Great. But I can't fire on him yet. I've got to wait until next turn, which will be turn six. So I'm bringing up some more units here. I've got to try and do something about these guys because that's that's the ones I've got to get rid of. I still can't work out a way to do it. Okay. That ends my turn five. He then brings up a few more units, block, roadblocks, trucks, wagons, and such forth. Again, he doesn't need them. At all. But here they come. Mm. 
is a close assault. Two hexes. My infantry becomes disrupted. My tank is fine. It's then turn six. So I'm firing on that truck. I've got to get rid of that. I get a four to one easily on it, but he's in a wood. That adds one to the die roll. Okay. I'm firing. Four to one. Got a couple of other shots that might come in. I took the truck off because, and then he reminded me there is a wood. I rolled a six. Plus one is a seven. At four to one is a miss. That brings back the truck. It's at that point I conceded the game. Because we're now just showing different, this is other things that were going on that we, we were talking about. I conceded the game because there's only 10 turns in the scenario. I spent a, a whole turn to get around that truck, okay, to get rid of it and rolled a six and failed. Let me say they can't move because I need, you know, there's only one unit that's fired, but the rest of them can't move because I need to surround either this infantry unit here or start bringing stuff to take out this infantry unit there. And I can't do that because then the truck clothes are silly willy all over the place. Remember, I've declared all my fires. So I can't, you can only fire a target once anyway. I mean, yes, I could fire this, but at that and such. But I can't do that now because I've declared only one fire. So they can't fire and they can't move. So for a whole turn, one truck has taken one, two, three, four, four of my five Panzer units. Um, I did say to Harry at the time, I said, I, you know, I'm, I'm getting a little bit frustrated that I haven't got any edge. I haven't got any tool that's helping me. Everything is hindering. Um, and the Russians have just got to sit there. I mean, at, at the end of the day, he's, I'm, I'm engaging my whole force against two, three, four units, and I can't even get one-to-ones on them. I need to get three to ones to start doing kills, but I'm struggling to get one to ones. So, yeah, I can see that at that point. I, I don't know if this is just a bad scenario or, sorry, situation. Um, it doesn't mean I don't want to play it. We, we've already talked about doing situation four. Apparently, there's a, an errata on that one which changes the victory conditions and makes it a little bit um, easier on the Germans. But all three situations I've seen so far have been very, well, first one, maybe not so much. Okay, that was about 50-50, but situation two was very pro-Russian. And this one, I think, is absolutely impossible for the Germans. But put it in the comments if, it, if you think, wait a minute, why didn't you do this? Or why didn't you do that? So, but anyway, that's how the situation, I, my, my, I failed a personal morale check, rolling that six. Because anything other than the six, he's taken out. All these units can then either move. I, I'd have brought them probably back down to here. Sorry to to, to take the, to try and take this one out one unit at a time, um, which would be like so turn seven, maybe turn eight, um, and then, as I said right at the beginning, put some form of defence on along this hill. All right, I would have to have taken him out as well because at the present moment he's projecting one to three, four down to there. So I, I, you know, struggling to see a way to get a draw. But him still standing there, just like, what? <laughs> really? So, yeah. As I say, if any of you can see a way through, or what I should have done with the Germans, maybe I should have attacked in the centre or whatever. But uh, if it, is anyone out there who actually won the situation as the Germans, A, were you playing a complete Muppet who was playing the Russians? Or B, are you an absolute tactical genius who can squeeze every bit of juice out of any piece of fruit? But so saying that, let's go back up to, 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 to me. So as you can see, um, yeah, that was my third table play of, of Panzerit. And I am enjoying the game. We are both playing fast. We're both having fun. We're having good chats as we're playing. But the actual situations on the board aren't helping. Um, 
as I say, I, I don't know who play tested that one and thought, ah, oh, this is a fair scenario, because they've nerfed everything the Germans can possibly use. Um, the mortars are too weak. Their infantry is not strong enough to take out any any infantry, and their tanks are, you know, useless against infantry anyway. And they've made them even weaker. Um, and they've given them anti tank guns rather than like something like a. Uh, Mobile artillery would have been useful, a Vespa or Hummel. I know those were sort of a bit later war, but they, the Germans did have Panzer Jaeger ones to do infantry support with. Anything. But they haven't given them, you know, the, the, the proper tools to try and take that kind of position. Um, so hopefully we've rolled for the dice to see who's playing what in situation four. Harry's the Russians again. So... Um, both sides are entering the ball in that one, and it looks like it could be potentially, well, it looks like the Russians have got quite a lot to do for a change. However, they've got a lot of kit to do what they need to do. Not like the Germans in this one, who didn't. Am I enjoying it? Yes. It is nice to play a game where I'm not having to read pages and pages and pages of rules. Um, there are puzzles. I thought I worked out some decent ways of doing puzzles. You can't account for the dice. Um, though I do seem to roll a lot of sixes. It's the one it is, what it is. Um, so, yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I, I say, if you do crack the box, don't play Situation 3. Situation 2, hmm. let's see, moving onwards, if they, yeah, they could be just learning scenarios. Just ways to learn how to move things in woods and such. Well, um, but you know, as I say, just a few little tweaks on that give the Germans a little bit more artillery, um, or the Russians a slightly less infantry, or maybe not look such powerful anti tank guns. Who knows? It just not probably needs a little bit of a tweak. And apparently, scenario four, situation four, has got some tweaks in it to make it more interesting so we'll see that'll be next week um yeah so let me know if you've enjoyed what you've seen you know any comments are much appreciated please as i've said in many scenarios tickle that like button and stroke it you know pat it whatever you need to do to do the like button because that's the way i know that i'm making you guys enjoy what i'm doing if you don't hit the like i, I would have no clue other than someone's watching it but someone who watches the video could be watching it for 30 seconds and then go yeah whatever but if, I, if someone likes a but likes a video then i know that actually the time has been worthwhile so as i say tickle that like button do whatever you need to do remember the notifications well that lets you know if and when i do upload a video um and as i say all the time play games have fun bye internet and I can't find the actual buy button. Hold on, I've got to do it now properly. This is going to end the recording. So let's try that again. Bye, Internet.